Hello, hello, and welcome to another two network match report live from Porto. Uh, tonight's finished Porto nil, Newcastle nil. It's been an absolutely unbelievable experience being out here in Portugal. Massive thanks again to True Faith. Um, please uh, follow them on, on Twitter at, at TFWPod. Uh, there's loads of great content over there, uh, as well as this video. There's loads of stuff. Um, Bobby Robson pod as well that, that I recorded earlier, which is really, um, it was amazing to talk about. Such a great man, obviously managed the two clubs. And today there was a, a, a memorial to him. Uh, there was a video played before before kickoff, which received a rapturous applause from everybody. Both teams held up a banner as well with the, with the man's name on. The, the, the great, the legendary Sir Bobby Robson. So it's been a, it's been an absolutely fantastic uh, game. Um, don't know where to start really. Um, there was a, probably about there's a few hundred fan, Newcastle fans here, um, probably about five hundred in full voice for the entire uh, game. We probably drowned out by their ultras on the opposite side anyway. But the, the stadium's fantastic. It's it's sort of built into a hill, so it's, it, you, you actually go into the top level and it's sort of you, you know you sink down into it. It's uh, in a little bowl. It's uh, sort of deceptively deep. Uh, just from the from the road level, and it's um, just a, it's a it's a really nice airy stadium, and they obviously had their they had their player unveilings today. Um, they had a lot of celebrations, there was loads of atmosphere before the game, which you might have ca caught a couple of uh, videos from uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts as well. They it was just it was just fantastic. The people in Port are so friendly; they were really welcoming. We were being asked in the. You know, have a drink with them, going past bars. Uh, you know, we had black and white stripes on, and it was just, just being fantastic, being really heartwarming, being here in a really just beautiful continental city, and uh, to experience a, you know, what was a really hard fought draw against a really good side. Porto won the league last season in Portugal under Sergio Conceição, and. You know, we we started with a relatively strong side. You know, we we had. Um, you know, we had Yedlin back in, Dummett came back in for a half. Dubravka started his first game uh, of pre-season. Clark was in alongside Lascelles. I mean, the, the news coming from Lejeune is that it's a cruciate ligament injury, which is absolutely devastating news. That is that is a big blow. And we'll see we'll see what happens in terms of transfer there because Rafa will be pushing for a replacement there. That's, that, that's huge. Obviously, Charles come in, but we, you know, Mbemba's gone. Obviously, he didn't play at night because he was injured. We can't go through the season with three, with three first choice centre backs. It's just it's it, whether we get a loan in, which is probably more likely. But again, who's going to be available? Who's going to be, I guess, willing to possibly not be first team as well? It's going to be a really, really tricky one for Rafa Benitez. So that's going to be something that is ironed out. Mitrovic flew over here to Portugal, but then swiftly got on a plane back before the game started. £22 million pound deal with Fulham has been agreed reportedly with bonuses and add-ons that could go up to £27 million, which is just mental. In fairness, if it's kind of goal bonuses and things, I don't think we'll ever see that £5 million, but if it's £22 million, that is that's massive. Um, quite significantly today as well, the Hossley start up front with Perez. Gale didn't get on at all in the game. Uh, Adam Armstrong came on later for him and you just wonder, there's a lot of rumours about him being used as a make-weight for the Rondon deal, a kind, of, a kind of swap. So, yeah, I kind of expect Gale to go now. Mitrovic is all but done. Fair negotiations um, by the Newcastle board um, for getting 22 million for, for Mitrovic. That's absolutely huge for a player who was never going to, Rafa was never going to play, was never going to pick. And we were sort of facing, like yesterday, a situation where Mitrovic might have to be reintegrated into the squad. You know, when he came back for training and he just had a, he had a face like thunder. But that's, that, 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 that situation seems to resolve itself now. So, you know, in the actual game, in the actual game, it, we still took a lot of pressure in the first half. We were very defensively rigid. I thought Dubravka was excellent throughout. I mean, he was organising the defence. We were really compact, we were really disciplined, and we kind of limited them to, to half chances in the first half. Abubakar was a, you know, that big, strong centre forward. He, 
he, he was a bit of a handful. Um, Lascelles was just throwing his body at the ball, diving into tap challenges. He, he looked really sharp tonight. I was really, really impressed with him. It's good to see Dummett back, but obviously, like uh, Mankio came on at half time because Dummett was, again, he's been nursing an injury. Perez showed some really nice touches, and we had Shelvin Diarmi in midfield. Diarmi, for me, was one of, one of the one of our best players. He was absolutely everywhere. He was breaking up play. He was passing it around. Murphy was on the left wing, had a few little runs, um, got past his man a couple of times, cutting inside once on his left. Richie again on the right hand side didn't have didn't have the best of games. Um, I think it was his lack of pace was really shown tonight, and um, we kind of got caught a bit from their overlapping overlapping fullbacks. I thought and. You know, with, with Richie pushing forward but not having the pace to get back to help Yedlin, we, we often found ourselves with sort of like two on one situations, and that was that was quite dangerous for us. But again, we again first half we were we grew into it towards the you know towards the end of the first half, coming into half time. We got a couple of corners, but like sort of nothing. We wasted one corner, which is quite annoying. We never really got a clear cut chance. But then it was the second half. Porto really, really came out. And actually, for the first sort of 10 minutes, both teams kind of kept what were relatively strong teams out. Uh, Yassi Brahimi, for, for me, was the standout for Porto. I think he, the playmaker, the number eight, he ran absolutely everything. And he was he's, he's a, just a very, very good player. And I think tonight, they were very, very unlucky not, not to win it. They, they had a lot more chances than we did. Uh, Dubravka made some said absolute world class saves there was one from a diving header where he, it would have been an unbelievable uh, save had he tipped around the post even but he, he managed to gr gr he flew across his goal grabbed onto it on the line and down he's just he's so reliable and he has such a positive impact on our defence and the organisation of it and he, you know he blocked another one there was another another one where he, he palmed it wide and then the follow up came off the bar that Porto were throwing everything and, and to be honest I think it was it was sort of Porto's poor finishing that meant that the you know that was a goalless uh, game tonight I think had they been more clinical we might have lost 2-0 for example I, I think but as much as we never really looked like nicking it we did you know in, in the second half we did sort of push forward a bit and we, we got a couple of corners but ultimately you know by we made a lot of wholesale changes after the hour. Key came on, so it was really good to see a bit more of him. Um, and you know, by the you know by the, by, the, by the final whistle, our front four consisted of Atsu on the right wing, Callum Roberts for some reason on the left wing. I would have expected to see Victor Fernandez come in there, but maybe he'll play against Braga. Who knows? Sean Longstaff came in in the kind of Perez role. He was sort of playing in behind. Uh, Adam Armstrong went up front, as, as I said earlier, it's quite significant that Gales didn't come on at all, which is very, very telling. In a game that you would expect him to want Rafa to get minutes for a first-team player, he hasn't at all. He hasn't even given him 20 minutes or 10 minutes, so I I, I really, really think Gales on his way. I, I fully believe that. Um, so yeah, Porto just failed to get that, 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 that sort of clinical finishing and to, the, the conviction to put it to put the game to bed really I think I think one goal would I don't think we would have come back from one goal down tonight um, we didn't really create too much but ultimately that's okay because Portugal uh, Porto just won the Portuguese league and they're a very good European side who will be playing in the Champions League you know that we need to know in terms of our limit they were bringing on internationals we were bringing on academy players so I think it's a really really good point it keeps us unbeaten and, and as much as Rafa said after the game you know it's not the, the result to him wasn't important and I, and I do believe him there I think I do believe him to an extent but at the same time he will be pleased that we kept a clean sheet that we kept our shape and as much as we allowed them a lot more clear cut chances in the second half maybe half the, the, compared to the, the half chances in the, in the first half we held our own and, and, and they didn't score and that's that's really positive especially in light of this Lejeune news so Fabian Shaw came on and I think it's going to be really important that he integrates very very quickly and becomes Lejeune's replacement a first team player who can form a, a, a solid defensive partnership with Lascelles with the help of Dubravka behind because that that trio of Dubravka, Lascelles and Lejeune 
from that Man United game onwards, from February onwards last season, was integral to our survival. And we're going to need Shaw to step up immediately. So he's played in the World Cup, but he only played a few. You know, he's only played a few games. So hopefully he'll be in good shape. Um, we're going to, we're just going to need him to really step up and, and, and come straight in. Um, really pleased for Dominic to get some some minutes. Pleased that Murphy got um, a start. Jamie Sterry came on at right back. Um, he looked f fairly tidy. I think. It seems, I don't know, it just seems unlikely that we're going to bring in another fullback. I mean, hopefully, I'd really like to see Sterry, I'd really like, this, I'd really like Rafa to think that Sterry's good enough and can step up as a, as a backup player um, and, and push Yedlin for a starting place. Maybe maybe not pushing for a starting place yet, but at least be there, waiting in the wings in case Yedlin gets injured or fatigued and he wants just a bit of squad rotation. Jamie Sterry's a local lad. He's really keen to get in the first team. I was lucky enough to meet him in November at the training ground and you know he fancies the chances here he wants to push for first team that's that's and he has he, has, he seems to have that self-belief so I, I'd really like to see him do well Sean Longstaff's played you know yet again he's that's his third game in three in pre-season so whether Rafa's having a really serious look at him uh, to bolster that midfield Hayden came on and made a really good challenge but I think the standout to me were, were Dubravka the cells Diame and Perez up front. Perez, loads of really clever touches, showed really nice technique, and you know he's 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 he's, he's class. He's a class act, and he and he's I think he's just getting better and better. Now that he, it's weird because when he when he used to play in the number ten role, he just it didn't seem to happen for him, and then suddenly it, it just it clicked, and and I, and I. He's, he's never looked back since. He, he's been absolutely. He looks dangerous all the time. His movement's fantastic. He's just an intelligent player, and he's starting to use his physicality a lot more as well. Um, so that, yeah, so yeah, really pleased there. Atu against his former club, he, he was he spent a year on loan at Porto. I didn't think he didn't offer too much. Obviously, he's just a pacey out there towards the end of the game. He's only ever really going to be an impact. So he's kind of fourth choice, isn't he, Atu? But I think you know, as long as we've got players like him and Clark who are just happy to sit. Happy to just, you know, be third choice, fourth choice, and wait for your turn. I mean, Key came on. I was really impressed with his vision. He had really nice close control. I think he's a really intelligent player as well, and just brings a bit of experience and a bit of. He'll bring a bit of savvy, bit of Premier League savvy for when we start the the league campaign in August, and I'd really want to see more of him. Hopefully, he'll get a full start against Braga, and hopefully, Shaw. We'll show what he's made in Braga as well. I hope he gets a start as well because, as I said before, it's going to be absolutely crucial that he hits the ground running at Newcastle. I think there's there's a lot more to come. It's weird because in tonight's game, in fact, all the preseason friendlies were sort of playing with a with, with strikers that aren't really expected to start the league season. Like Adam Armstrong's not going to start. Parsley's not going to start. It's probably going to be Muto. And or Rondon, um, I, I think, and we'll, we'll just wait and see. On both of those, obviously, the Mudo has to be um, finalised, but it seems all but done. I think it's formalities. I think there's real um, weight behind this Rondon Gale thing. I think that will go through. I genuinely think that will happen. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out any surprises as well. We've banked a lot of money now for Mitrovic, which should open up. Um, squad places, wages and transfer budget to do things where it gives Rafa a bit more manoeuvrability. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's, it's a really interesting time. Braga again, I think we'll, we'll set up as we did tonight, defensively, work on the break um, and try to sniff out some opportunities. Um, interesting, the keys, like really, and, and again, the whole key, key was integral to, to, to Perez's goal in the last minute. Uh, Whipping a corner in, he was taking corner. He took another corner tonight, um, and something another player who can assume that Shelby long passing. He seems very very comfortable. Um, Diarmo was great as well with his passing tonight. So all in all, just a very good embattled performance. It's been a fantastic experience here in Porto. Um, I'm absolutely knackered. It's been so long. I mean, from what we've heard is that this the the, the, the NUFC TV stream kind of. Was a, was a nightmare, it was an absolute mess tonight. So many of you might not have actually seen the game. 
So hopefully I've kind of given you a bit of a, if you haven't, hopefully I've given you a bit of a flavour of, of kind of what it was like. My, my voice is very hoarse, I've been drinking all day, I'm absolutely exhausted, it's been really hot, um, but it, um, I've, had a, I've had an absolute class day, an amazing experience. Newcastle fans in full voice, that was loads of fun. And um, yeah, I'm going to be knackered tomorrow, but um, hope you've enjoyed this match report. Live from Porto, it's finished Porto nil, Newcastle nil. I've been Adam of the Toon Network. Please subscribe on SoundCloud, iTunes. Please subscribe down below if you're watching this on YouTube as well. Come and find us on Facebook and we're on Twitter at the Toon Network. I've been Adam. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.